Hello everyone, we're back again with another critique video. Today we have on the channel Sean Nalawani, who is a fitness influencer on YouTube, also on Instagram and all that. Talks about, well, a lot of nonsense, honestly. He's got 1.09 million subscribers, so just a little over 1 million subscribers, which is egregious considering how asinine his posits and proposals are and suggestions are. I haven't seen too much of him, but I've seen enough. Of course, I guess at the same time I haven't though, because we're about to react to him. So today we're reacting to a video he posted called, Is Gaintaining Killing? your gains. Possibly. And here's why. If you don't know what gain-taining is, let me just Google that real quick because it put it quite eloquently. Gain-taining definition. Gaining muscular body weight very slowly while staying very lean. I have my opinions on that right now, but we'll get to it whenever the video starts. So let's waste no further time and just jump right into the video. I have not watched this before. This will be the first time. That's typically how it is with these videos. As you guys should know by now, no supplements need to be taken on a carnivore diet as you can derive everything you need from such a diet. However, this does not mean that there aren't certain nutraceuticals that can be taken to further ameliorate inflammation and subsequently any illness disorder and or disease someone may be plagued with. One of the best products on the market, if not the best product, in doing such a thing is the flagship product to a company known as Cerule, known as Stem Enhance Ultra, which effectuates the release of one's own inherent stem cells from their bone marrow. When this occurs, this results in what may be perceived by some to be the epitome of regeneration. Now, I cannot under any circumstances claim any cause and effect relationships from this product and any heart health outcome. However, one may speculate what they wish with this information. If you want to know more about this product or are interested in buying this product, as well as many others from the Cerule company, refer to the link on the screen now or the description below. Then yes, as the video title says, that is going to kill your gains. You'll keep your leanness, but you're not going to add any real size, and your strength gains are also going to be significantly compromised. Who says that size is what you should be going for and aiming towards in terms of strength training? Who said that? Just to pause before you even get started here. Size isn't what you should be aiming for and striving to achieve. It's strength. In terms of what's indicated for human health, yes. What's up, guys? Sean Nalawani, realscienceathletics.com. It's not real science. It's sophistry. It's chicanery. It's meretricious convoluting. It's exactly what you do. Meretricious obfuscations to make things abstruse and to make yourself be perceived by other impressionable people, particularly your fan base, as someone that's actually credible, who is not. In this video today, I want to explain why going too far with the whole gain-taining or main-gaining philosophy, whatever you want to call it, you can't really go too far with that. That's actually how human beings, just based on that definition alone, are supposed to be functioning in terms of muscularity and muscle building. You maintain your size, and the only thing that you're gaining is musculature by imposing strenuous, laborious, but indicated physiological exercise onto the body with higher forces, with heavy force, particularly with variable resistance training of the adequate type, not with static weights, because that's actually damaging to joints. We'll get to that if it becomes salient or relevant could potentially be slowing down your muscle building progress or even preventing you from making any real muscle building progress at all. Dep okay, let's go ahead and have you talk about how to build muscle properly. Sean, let's go ahead and do that. Let's get into that. Not exactly how you're implementing it. So for those of you who are newer to this, the idea behind gain taining is that instead of running more traditional bulking and cutting cycles where you switch between definite periods of being in a calorie surplus versus being... You are never in a calorie surplus unless you are in a hyperthermic event. Calories are the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of water around a closed thermodynamic system, also known as a bomb calorimeter by one degree Celsius. It's a measurement of kinetic activity or the movement of the molecules in that water. That movement being caused by photons of a certain wavelength interacting with the surrounding water after being released from the rapid combustion of a food in said bomb calorimeter via a massive electrical current, therefore causing rotations, vibrations, and translations, Sean. That's all they are. So then, in order to be informal, you would say, or colloquial, you would say, they're units of heat energy, or heat measurement, which, technically, even that's not correct, because you can't actually directly measure energy. The pure, authentic form of energy can't be directly measured. They're units of temperature and nothing more, which means that a calorie surplus would be hyperthermia, and a calorie deficit would be hypothermia. If you were never in those states, or very, very rarely, hopefully, you are not changing or maintaining or altering your calorie intake. Because if you didn't know, Sean, the human body doesn't absorb energy. It absorbs mass or matter. So you cannot be in a calorie surplus or a calorie deficit via the methods that you are going to put forth and suggest and postulate to be methods of attaining a calorie surplus state or calorie deficit state status. So let's move on from this terminology. It's false. It's fallacious. It's erroneous. Calorie deficit 
Instead of that, you just eat around your maintenance level and you focus on slowly adding muscle. So basically you eat until satiety, which is what we have done for four and a half million years, John. But at the same time, you're saying you eat your maintenance, or in other words, your maintenance calorie amount. So actually you aren't insinuating or implying rather that you eat until satiety because many people that eat their maintenance calories, quote unquote, they're not eating calories, we were to cover that, are not eating until satiety. They're starving themselves, especially if they're not eating the indicated food for human beings, that being primarily the flesh and associated fat of large ruminant animals with added fat in the form of butter, tallow, lard, suet, and ghee, added salt, taste, and water. But Without, Again, we'll get to that later, probably. Without gaining fat. And there are different approaches to this. So some people will say that you should eat literally right at your exact calorie maintenance level with no surplus. No one's able to figure that out. And also no one eats calories. You can't eat calories. Calories are units of heat measurement, informally speaking. You cannot eat energy. You eat mass or matter. What happens when the body actually sequesters substrate is it absorbs substrate in the form of fat, carbohydrate, alcohol, and protein. Chemically interacts those substances under control with molecular oxygen. They react in such a way so as to change the chemical bonds, and since those chemical reactions are exothermic, meaning they release heat rather than endothermic, meaning they require heat to effectuate, some photons or calories are released to entropy of your body, which is typically insensible. And then your mitochondria or your body uses a majority of that heat energy, not all of it, but a majority of it, to create the molecular energy storage form or the cellular energy currency known as ATP. Because if you didn't know, ATP is not energy itself, it's a storage form of energy. That's what happens. So again, you can't not eat calories false whatsoever whereas for others they'll still consider a small surplus maybe um, 100 or 200 calories above maintenance not possible next they'll consider that as main gaining and they'll only classify it as bulking if you're going into higher surpluses of let's say 400 or 500 calories or more above this is pseudo sophistication this is just bullshit nonsense. A human being should be eating until satiety no matter what their goals are fitness-wise, life-wise in general. But it has to be proper food if you are trying to attain the most salubrious physiological environment within your body as possible. A 100% carnivorous diet consisting primarily of the flesh and associated fat of large ruminant animals with added fat in the form of saturated fat, straight hydrocarbon chains, the stuff solid room temperature in the forms of butter, tallow, lard, suet, and ghee, added salt to taste of water as established unequivocally by stable nitrogen and carbon isotope analyses conducted in 2019 on the collagen of the long bones of ancient human remains that established once again unequivocally that we had higher carnivore ratings and do have higher carnivore ratings than that of the four primary carnivores at the time, those being foxes, lions, hyenas, and wolves, with our only plant material being consumed during that time through large fibrous tubers and roots in starvation episodes and or fruit in the very ephemeral, very transient fruit season that we still find ourselves experiencing. Should eat until satiety with that food. No carbohydrates to speak of, zero grams. So, the first question is, do you actually need a calorie surplus in order to build muscle? And no, you don't. And even if you're being colloquial here in terms of a mass surplus, no, you don't. In fact, it's not really indicated. I mean, significantly elevated protein synthesis after exercise occurs approximately 36 hours or for 36 hours after training, a process that usually happens during your sleep. So if you ate within 36 hours, you would have significant protein synthesis occurring. So even if you went on a 24 hour fast, you could build muscle. So no, you don't need to be in a mass surplus either. Mass of food. Mass because mass and matter are what the body absorb. People out there will give a black and white yes or no answer to this question. But well, yeah, I, I just did because it is black and white. We're not going to use pseudo sophistication and pseudo sophisticated chicanery here. Once again, you're using meretricious convolutes and obfuscations to make things far more abstruse than they actually are and to aggrandize your conclusions and your opinions in the perception of other impressionable people, particularly your fan base. That's what you're doing, Sean. And that's what all of you do. You don't know what you're talking about. The real answer is that it depends, okay? It depends. No, it doesn't depend, ever. Your body's pretty f***ing smart and prudent and frugal and parsimonious. It can acclimate and adapt and function in strenuous, bereft conditions, destitute conditions current body composition and it depends on what exactly you mean by build muscle so are we talking okay what are you talking about building muscle means initiating or effectuating an increase in protein synthesis within the musculature of the human body what do you mean what do we mean by building muscle about building some muscle but not necessarily all the way to your maximum potential or are we okay either f***ing way that doesn't matter. The human body is capable of building muscle during a, to be technically correct, mass maintenance, not calorie maintenance, mass maintenance. What happens is if your body requires more 
protein or substrate in the form of fat and protein, certain amino acids, certain fatty acids, to maintain extra musculature that you've now acquired or built, rather, your appetite will go up commensurately. <sighs> About 100% fully optimized muscle growth. So in order to- Do you think we did this ancestrally speaking? Did we do this in the wild? Did we go ahead and just count our calories? Even our mass, did we count how many grams or kilograms of food we ate? Or did we just eat until we were full on the proper human food for our species? Which I already explained. Rewind and find out what that is. Muscle, you need protein, which gives your body the raw- Yes, you need protein. Especially the nine essential amino acids, like isoleucine, leucine, lysine, histidine, tryptophan, phenylalanine, threonine, etc to construct new muscle tissue and you need calories to actually carry out that construction process remember no you don't sean because your body doesn't absorb or use calories wow the only calories that are involved in human metabolism is the insensible loss of heat to entropy and the amount of that heat that's encapsulated first before it's released as entropy to create ATP. But that's a result of an exothermic biochemical reaction. The human body employs chemical energy, not thermal energy for metabolic processes. I already explained this, Sean. Rewind my video. Calories are ultimately just energy. So yes, they're energy, they're heat energy to be informal. <laughs> the body doesn't absorb energy. If we absorbed energy, I could go out in the sun right now and get fat, gain some weight. Photons have a rest mass of zero, which means they can affect the mass balance of the body by zero. And that includes muscle mass, Sean. Protein, obviously you're gonna get that from your diet. 0 0.8 to one grams per pound of body weight daily is a pretty No, you should do 1.75 grams per kilogram of lean body mass, actually. Lean body mass being roughly calculated by taking the optimal BMI, quote unquote, which is around 22 and a half, and multiplying that by your height in meters squared. A very rough estimate, actually, but there you go. It's much lower than you would think. And you can go because you have to understand that excess protein is converted into sugar via gluconeogenesis and that's not good having excess glucose in the bloodstream better than that if you prefer and then for calories you can either get that from your diet by eating in an energy no you can't you quite literally cannot it is not even physically possible to do that the calorie numbers on food labels isn't how many calories are in that food that's how many calories would be yielded after combusting that food in a bomb calorimeter via a massive electrical current and also by the way it's a rough rough estimate, an extremely rough estimate, which is why legally in all Western countries, calorie numbers on food labels are legally allowed to be out by 20% in either direction. Wow. And I swear, if someone brings up the law of thermodynamics, you better prove to me that you understand what it says, when it's applicable, and when it's not applicable. Or you can get it by using the calories that your body already has stored. Wow. This is the same graphic that Dr. Mandel used. Just a copy paste little graphic here. Let's rewind to see what he actually just said, though. Energy surplus, or you can get it by using the calories that your body already has stored. It doesn't have calories stored. It has mass stored, typically in the form of fat. Okay, what happens when your body decides to use that stored fat for energy purposes, fuel, is it chemically interacts that fat with molecular oxygen, which produces the byproducts H2O, which is still mass, and CO2, which is also still mass. Everything remains mass, smaller, forms of mass, albeit, but mass. We don't have stored energy on our bodies. It's important that we get this right. Mass and energy are interconvertible, but it's not like my table here, my desk, or this camera will poof, convert into energy. That's not how it works. So yes, we store matter or mass, and we absorb matter or mass. The amount of energy contained within my stored fat on my body, or your stored fat, anyone's stored fat, is equal to the mass of that fat times the speed of light squared. Sean, this isn't just me being trivially pedantic and captious. This is important because you are contributing, you are perpetuating this promulgation of misinformation, dangerous misinformation that contributes to the causing or the perpetuation of already existing eating disorders, particularly bulimia and anorexia, by telling people to moderate their calories. Doesn't matter what you eat, as long as your calorie number maintains the same level that it's been at your maintenance level, calculated by God knows what, God knows what erroneous calculator with errors beyond belief, statistical errors. <laughs> Get a grip on actual science, Sean. Your existing fat tissue. Fat so tissue's mass, covered that.
Yes, you can build muscle without a calorie surplus. Correct, because a calorie surplus is not attainable by your methods. It's attainable by subjecting yourself to a hyperthermic event. Even then, I don't even think that's really called a calorie surplus. It's not really... Anyway, semantics. If you have enough stored fat available that your body is willing to burn off and- Which, which you will have if you adopt this man's dietary suggestions, by the way. Any of these misanthropes, these miscreants. Convert to new muscle growth. So at higher body- What are you talking about, Sean? You f moron. You absolute dolt. This man just said with a straight face that you can convert fat to muscle. Are you f kidding me, Sean. People listen to this man. This man has over a million subscribers. That's not how things work within the body, Sean. Wow. Levels. Um, this is no problem at all. You have plenty of stored fat available. And if there's a strong enough training stimulus in place and you have enough protein there, your body will have no issue with reallocating some of those fat calories and swapping them out for new muscle growth. That's not how it fucking works. I mean, look at that. Look at that straight face there. He's saying this with a straight face. Your body makes muscle from amino acids, not fatty acids. There are some other nutrients involved like potassium. Body composition is dictated primarily by your endocrine system balance or hormonal balance. The activity of your endocrine slash hormonal system. The status of such system or such a system. Particularly insulin, testosterone, growth hormone, and also things like estrogen. That will impact the way that your body allocates certain mass constituents. Estrogen being an umbrella term, actually, because there's three types of estrogen. We just call all three of them together estrogen, primarily estradiol. Anyway, what the hell are you talking about? If you're overweight, you can eat in a calorie deficit and- Don't talk to people who are overweight, Sean. Don't you dare talk to people who are overweight and think that you're going to help them. You're not going to help them. You're going to make them more debilitated by perpetuating their eating disorder if they have one. And if they don't have one, you're still going to derange their body composition. F*** me. Fat, while gaining muscle at the same time. If you're skinny fat, then you can do the same thing, even if you're already in- Yeah, skinny fat is attained typically by eating a wrong diet, number one, but also combining that with doing contraindicated steady state long-term moderate intensity cardio exercise, which I'm pretty sure, Sean, I'm gonna be very clear here, I don't know for certain, but your crowd typically promotes that type of exercise. Optimization for cardio requires carrying excess body fat to power your efforts. It means minimizing muscle because muscle has significant nutrient or mass requirements. It's the entire reason why marathon runners are as skinny as they are. They have a surprisingly low amount of musculature and a surprising percentage of body fat. They're the epitome of what's referred to as skinny fat because of the onerous, laborious, strenuous force imposed onto the body through moderate intensity, steady state, long-term cardio exercise. And not only that, just a fun fact here, because many people don't talk about this, traveling longer distances also almost necessitates low body weight. And from a human physiology perspective, that means sacrificing bone density. That hypothesis may not be something that's commonly associated associated with exercise. However, it is consistent with research and data on the subject, which shows that endurance athletes typically do present with low bone density. So yeah, anyway, skinny fat. Yeah, we got it covered. It's in shape, uh, but you're just carrying a bit of extra fluff. Uh, maybe let's say you are something like 15 or 20% body fat, then you can also do a standard cutting phase. And no, absolutely contraindicated in the extreme, insalubrious. No, Sean, you don't know what you're talking about. Who the f are you to say any of this? One point zero nine million subscribers. Wow. Everything is on point in terms of your training and nutrition, then you can probably you don't know what the fuck that means. What does that mean? On point. According to you, it would be completely contraindicated for human physiology. I know it would be some muscle while you lean down at the same time. However, that happens when you optimize your hormonal or endocrine system via a proper human diet and proper physiologically indicated resistance training in the form of variable resistance training that actually imposes indicated force. I'm not talking about PT bands, by the way. Band only training has not superseded weight training if you're taking into consideration assessing, observing, or utilizing the commercially available bands on the market. That is not what I'm talking about. Weight training is better than that. And this is a big, however, it's very important to understand that as you get leaner- Oh, you arrogant ass. The amount of hubris exuding from you. It drips from every pore of your being, Sean. The ability to stand there with a straight face and pontificate as if you know what you're talking about. It is dismal. It is grim. It's a grim reality. If you're in this space, you're almost definitely aware of all of the comments that are made about the toxins in bottled water and especially tap water. So I'll save you the time on that. What almost always goes unappreciated, however, is the 
the fact that you only absorb 15% of all water, no matter what kind it is, bottled, filtered, or tap. There is a way to fix this, however, and it's with a particular machine that makes water molecules that are much smaller than regular water molecules, so small, in fact, that it makes tea on impact with a tea bag without the need for boiling that water. This makes it 600% more hydrating than regular water, which of course will help with many health conditions, as it hydrates your cells more efficiently and more effectively than any other water that you can find. If you want to know more about this machine, like where to buy it, how it works, and also how it can replace your dish soap and sanitizer by emulsifying and mixing with oil, refer to the links in the description below your body is going to become less and less willing to break down stored fat and use those calories for muscle growth because you it can't use those calories for muscle growth you f***ing dolt you know nothing about human physiology patently demonstrably what the hell are you talking about asinine moron have a finite amount of stored fat available and fat is um, obviously important for health and for survival so it no sh you know what? I guarantee you promote a low-fat diet, though, when you're cutting or trying to maintain calories because fat is the most concentrated source of calories in the diet. Nine calories per gram, four calories per gram for carbohydrates. Therefore, carbohydrates are better. God. You're truly eating at maintenance, meaning you're... You can't do that in terms of calories because you can't eat calories in the first place. I guess I'm eating my maintenance calories of zero every day. I'm eating zero calories every day, so I guess I'm maintaining my calorie intake. Calorie intake exactly matches your calorie expenditure, then the calorie expenditure, the only calories that are expended from the human body is the insensible loss of heat to entropy of the body due to exothermic reactions that take place within the body that are biochemical. It's funny, you actually release more calories that way if you eat more fat and have a low insulin because of the uncoupling of one's mitochondria, which would mean that if you ate more fat and less carbohydrates, that would be an auspicious approach to actually burning more calories, wouldn't it? No, but you don't even know what coupling and uncoupling of mitochondria is, do you? You don't even know how carbohydrates affect your hormones or fat affects your hormones, glucagon and insulin or protein. If I got you up on my channel to talk to you about this, you would not be able to talk about it. You would not be able to give me a correct answer to that. This is, this is astounding. Only place that your body can get the calories from to build new muscle is... That's not what the body does. It uses mass. It uses constituents of protein, also known as amino acids, to build muscle. It doesn't use fat to build muscle, Sean. It cannot do that. What a f idiot from your fat tissue it can't just create energy out of thin air it and can't create <sighs> covered that can't just endlessly get leaner and leaner while gaining more and more muscle okay you're okay not endlessly not ad infinitum sure but to use what you are saying informally to interpret it informally yes it can if you eat the proper human diet as established unequivocally by stable nitrogen and carbon isotope analyses conducted in 2019 through a mass spectrometer tin capsules i mean anyway i'm gonna cut down to 10 percent body fat and then gain tain for the next five years and just continue losing fat while gaining more and more muscle eventually you will not lose fat anymore because your body will not have any excess fat to lose like that um, your body eventually is going to hit a point where don't talk about the body like you know anything about it i wonder if that's a green screen gym not even a real one it's going to say okay i get that there is this stressor in the environment and that it's a potential threat um, which is your workouts but i can't sacrifice any more body fat because i just don't have enough and even if i do add more no actually it's funny that you even recognize that the body understands certain stressors and actually acclimates to those because given the exercise that i believe that you at least promote a little bit of that being moderate intensity cardio exercise this up regulates your cortisol and down regulates testosterone and growth hormone for the purpose of maintaining excess body fat and stripping muscle off the body because of its nutrient requirements i already explained it rewind my video for that too God, just the arrogance here, the narcissism, the hubris, and also, honestly, the insolence and impudence and impertinence to people that know what the f*** we're talking about when it comes to biochemistry and human physiology. Speak upon the things that you know about. So it's going to require more calories to maintain it. False covered that. Unfortunately, we just have to make a trade-off and we have to leave things as it is. Remember that your body is ultimately just a survival and replication machine and your... It's also a series of chemical reactions that utilize mass and matter to effectuate wired muscle building and fat burning mechanisms really don't give a crap about your desire to look like your favorite uh, Instagram fitness influencer. Your body- Correct. They also don't care about how many calories you're eating because you're not 
f***ing eating any trying to find the most balanced state that it can so that it can survive in the environment based yes homeostasis good job acclimation adaptation good but you don't understand how the body adapts to that stuff do you typically with hormones actually it is with hormones because hormones are signaling molecules on the external stressors that are there and based on the calories and the nutrients that are coming in and based on nutrients not calories calories it has currently stored so if i hear the word calories come out of his mouth again well what am i gonna do it's not true that you can literally eat at maintenance where calorie intake precisely matches calorie expenditure and that's not possible because your intake of calories is always necessarily zero continue gaining more and more muscle over the long term once you're already relatively lean okay if who the f are you to say that you can't build muscle while maintaining your current dietary intake of food? Because in fact, Sean, yes, you can. Your appetite will increase if your body desires or requires more nutrients in the form of protein, amino acids, fatty acids, etc., to maintain or build more muscle. In other words, synthesize more muscle. Commensurate with the demand. Goodness me. On PEDs, then that's going to influence this to some extent because that's going to change the overall muscle building environment in your body and recall. Yes, it will. This should don't do PEDs. Maybe a I supplicate. Feasible, especially if you have uh, good genetics to go along with it. But for natural trainees, genetics play a minimal role in terms of muscle building. Sorry, relative to other aspects and other factors. Especially with around average genetics, it's just not going to happen. And this is the big problem that I often see. People who are too caught up in the idea of maintaining an aesthetic physique, they want to gain muscle, but they're terrified of gaining any body fat at all. And then eat the indicated diet for human beings, that being a 100% carnivorous diet consisting primarily of the flesh and associated fat of large ruminant animals. Eggs are fine too. Dairy if it doesn't give you a problem, but dairy is the least optimal in terms of carnivory. Carnivorous diet, largely composed of ruminant animal meat with the associated fat and added fat in the form of saturated fat end up just keeping their calories too low even though they're already they can't f do that is zero too low sean well guess the f what sucks for you because that's how many you're eating every day they lean and they just end up spinning their wheels and not really adding any meaningful size over the long term that's also because of the fact that most people are using static weights to weight train and that will lead to a plateau of muscle growth you need variable resistance because you're stronger and weaker in certain ranges of motion for example in the weak range of motion to be analogous at the sticking point where the bar is closest to the chest in a bench press you're the weakest in the strong range of motion it's right before your joints lock out at that stretch you're the strongest a static weight imposes the same amount of force in every range of motion which is also why it is damaging to joints perniciously and insidiously but sometimes immediately especially with shoulder injuries with bench press some people are going to disagree with this in the comments and they're going to say nope not true i've always eaten at my calorie maintenance level and um, i've gained muscle just fine so you don't know what you're talking about but sean you don't know what you're talking about for other reasons you don't even know what a calorie is and you don't even know that the body can't even use them the reality here is that no one actually knows in the first place what their exact calorie maintenance level is since- Correct! Basal metabolic rate calculators are completely erroneous. That's impossible to track. There are way too many factors that influence that, and it also fluctuates from day to day. And then on top of that, no one knows exactly how many calories they're consuming either. Even if you weighed all of your foods right down to the precise microgram, there would still be- And instead of using the grams, you just convert it to calories, really? Look, look at that insalubrious amalgam of slop right there in that bowl. There's no meat on that table. That is rabbit food full of plant toxins such as glucose, fiber, glycoalkaloids, lectins, oxalates, saponins, goitrogens, isothiocyanates. Get it out of my face creation there. And when you weight train hard and intensely, your appetite is going to be stimulated from that. And what very often happens is that as long as you be stimulated even more if you do the wrong kinds of exercise, particularly cardio or what's colloquially deemed cardio, someone isn't going out of their way to restrict their calories, then they'll just naturally consume a bit more food <sighs> throughout the day to compensate and to match uh, the hunger that they're feeling. And since they're still keeping their diet under control overall, and they're just eating to satiation, but they're not indulging further than satiety satiety sean they think that that means that they're eating at maintenance when they are in fact in a small calorie surplus they just if you're in a calorie surplus also to be again informal a mass surplus for eating too much even though you're eating to satiety you are eating the wrong kinds of food
End of discussion. Carbohydrates stimulate your insulin, which stimulates your appetite. They also downregulate glucagon actively. The catabolic hormone, as opposed to the anabolic hormone, anabolic meaning feeding, building, and storing fat. Lipogenesis, bud. Realize it though. Um, you know, even if it's just a couple hundred extra calories, and that's because that's not possible. Cover that. Next. Their body is calibrating its hunger cues to encourage them to eat more because of that extra training stress. It wants more energy so that it can build muscle. No, it wants more matter and mass. It wants more fuel. That's the word you should use, not energy. False. It is not craving energy. Needing to sacrifice body fat. Um, and just think of it this way. If that isn't, once again, that is not captious or pedantic. Notice how just one change of verbiage changes the entire philosophy here. The entire philosophy. The entire approach that's posited and suggested by these individuals. If they use the word mass, it would change everything. There would be apertures all throughout their argument. One gains body weight, period. Aside from, you know, the possibility of a bit of water and glycogen weight. But if they... No, 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 no. Not just that. <laughs> no. God. Body weight is composed of body fat, water, like you said, musculature, muscle mass, bone density, connective tissue. That stuff matters too. Imagine if you're doing a lot of steady state cardio and your bone density goes down. Well, your weight will go down with that. It's actually the entire reason it sacrifices bone density in the first place in that scenario to lower your body weight because traveling longer distances almost necessitates low body weight. And from a human physiology perspective, that means sacrificing bone density. Covered that. Word for word, rewind. I said exactly that word for word. Traveling longer distances also almost necessitates low body weight. And from a human physiology perspective, that means sacrificing bone density are consistently gaining overall body weight over the longer term by definition that means they're in a calorie surplus no not by definition because by definition a calorie surplus would be hyperthermia somebody starts out at 150 pounds and then after 150 pounds of what total body weight right how much of that 150 pounds is fat how much of that 150 pounds is muscle wow of time now they weigh 165 and they say that they did it by gaintaining and just eating at maintenance you know that can't possibly be true there yes it f***ing can to be informal with my verbiage or with our verbiage yes they f***ing can this is amazing and not in a good way it is egregious <laughs> to be an energy surplus there for them false I'll be carrying more total mass. False. So you just said energy and then you said mass. Energy cannot be consumed by the body. And even if it could, it is not converted into mass. It can't be in our physiological systems that we find ourselves having as a consequence of being human. What does this mean for you in practical terms? Well, you don't know, but okay, let's get practical. Let's get pragmatic. If you're overweight or skinny fat or you're in decent shape, how dare you talk to people that are overweight? Just carrying um, a moderate amount of excess fat, then yes, you can eat in a calorie deficit, lean down. No, you can't. False. Not possible. If you're training your diet is on point, then you'll gain muscle during that process. You don't know what a diet that's on point looks like at all. Clearly shown by your little stock image that you put up earlier, the little animation, just like this one amount of muscle that you'll gain specifically, that's going to depend on factors like um, how much body fat you're actually carrying. That is not a factor whatsoever, Sean, not even close to being a factor. In fact, you can build muscle and maintain the amount of fat you have on your body at the same time. Training experiences, um, your diet and workout structure. Training your... experiences, yes. Diet and workout structure, yes. But you don't know what the optimal versions of those are etc. But once you are relevant, yes, and etc. Yes. Yeah, etc. No, your hormonal status, Sean, the most important one you just failed to mention your hormonal and endocrine status. Okay, 12, 11, 10% body fat, or even lower than that. If you want to continue gaining significant muscle over the long term, oh. you are going to need periods of eating in a net calorie surplus. No, you are not going to need that. That's not even possible unless you're talking about hyperthermia and that has no effect on muscularity. Over five more minutes left for that to happen. And if you're obsessed with being lean, you know, the slightest little blur on your abs causes which you would perpetuate because that's typically a sign of an eating disorder and body dysmorphia. And you would perpetuate that with this kind of dialogue, this monologue, rather this rhetoric. You uh, have an anxiety attack. You refuse to bump your calories up at all. Any increase on the scale mentally upsets you. Then, yes, as the video type. And that would be the fault of people like you.
says, that is going to kill your gains. You'll keep your leanness, but you're not gonna add any real size and your strength gains are also gonna be significantly compromised. I'm zoning out. I'm honestly, I'm really trying here, but wow. Now, now all of that, that said, that, said, that, that does, does not mean, mean that you need a massive, massive calorie, calorie surplus, surplus to, make to make solid gains, gains and, it and it doesn't mean that you need that you to get, get fat during, during the process. process. Not at all. Not at all. Um, um, dirty bulking is a complete waste of time and effort. I've been there and done that and I can tell you it's not the route you wanna go. And I don't need to tell you that because you can just clearly see for yourself, yourself right, right here, here that, that again that, that is, is not, not the road the you want to go down your body can only use a limited amount of calories per day for building new it can't utilize calories to build muscle it utilizes calories that are the byproduct of the exothermic chemical reactions that occur in the body very temporarily, very ephemerally and transiently to create ATP, a cellular energy currency form or a molecular energy storage form, which is a form of mass. Well, anything beyond that will just be stored as fat and you can stay. That's not necessary. What about uncoupled mitochondria, Sean? Which occurs in mitochondria during states of ketogenesis and therefore consequently low insulin, in which the mitochondria utilize more nutrient substrate fuel, in other words, to create ATP. In other words, more of that substrate is released as heat to entropy of your body. And in even more other words, therefore, wastes energy. That happens when you eat a lot of fat and protein, but have low insulin due to an abstention of carbohydrates. I can't, I, this is, this is unbelievable relatively lean while you gain muscle as long well, as well actually unfortunately it is believable about it properly so if properly give me a break sean I gain taining or main gaining we're talking about a small calorie surplus uh maybe anywhere from let's say 100 to 300 calories above maintenance depending on not possible next individual then i would completely agree with that approach because that should be a high enough amount to build of course you'd agree with it because you're a f***ing idiot optimally or let's say cl at least close to optimally but it will be small enough that uh, body fat levels will be kept under control they will increase to some degree but it's going to be so minor and it's going to happen so it's not like any excess mass is necessarily stored as fat do you not realize how wrong you are you are so wrong about everything you're saying your hormones dictate how much nutrient or mass you store versus how much you expend fully that you're going to see it happening from a mile away and you can just adjust your approach um, and modify things as you go. So this really all depends on what someone's precise definition of gain-taining actually is. Pseudo-sophistication, sophistry, chicanery, meretricious convoluting to aggrandize yourself as well as the ideas that you hold and posit. Summarize your video. Actually, I summarized all of them. But in any case, even though a surplus will be necessary if you want to make significant gain. False, arrogant, shill. You rapacious, cupidinous shill. Once you're already decently lean, it's also not mandatory that you do a long drawn out. Being lean is not necessarily a good thing, especially if they do what you say to do in terms of diet. What if they're skinny fat? Phase in a calorie surplus, followed by a long drawn out cutting phase. You don't necessarily hyperthermia. We have to go hypothermia. There you go. Cutting phase hypothermia three months or six months doing a longer term bulk and then spend uh, maybe eight or 12 weeks or whatever doing a cut. You can definitely do that if you want. There's nothing wrong with it. You know, if you're making consistent Keep an eye on your body fat levels. Once you've gotten a bit softer than you'd like, drop into a quick deficit, strip off the excess fat, and then just rinse and repeat. You know, I don't see anything wrong with that approach as long as you execute it properly and you truly give yourself those periods with a definite surplus. You don't see anything wrong with that approach because you are a myopic, superficial moron. This is jejun, vacuous, meretricious nonsense. Look up meretricious, Sean. I mean, that is exactly what you are and what your ideas are, your rhetoric, rather. Uh, if you're training a solid and you're eating enough protein, then by doing that, you should be able to consistently gain muscle. Yeah, but you don't know what enough protein is. Sorry, had to throw that in there because you just said what it was and you're off. Staying relatively lean over the longer term, but you'll just have a slight ebb and flow in your body fat levels rather than trying to keep them perfectly stable all the time. Now, it's hard to assign an exact time frame to this because a lot of it will just come down to improvisation based on your individual needs and preferences, okay? There's no need to say from the outset that this is precisely how long you're going to be in a surplus for, and this is precisely how long you're going to stay in a deficit. Um, I would say just play it. Oh boy, I, I can't do this anymore. We covered it all. Holy sh**.
guys. This is the type of nonsense that is being perpetuated and promulgated still to this day by arrogant morons. Back in the day before social media, when you spoke an idea that was false, you were kept in line and kept in check by the people surrounding you. But now what happens is you can post online and if you get the right tags, traffic will come to you and people will adopt your ideology impetuously with alacrity. <laughs> Anyway, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like, please subscribe, please leave your comments below, subscribe to the Patreon for one week early uploads, ad-free content, uncensored content, unblurred content when it comes to the pop-ups on the screen, as well as getting an extra upload per week. Three videos per week, only two videos are seen on YouTube. Buy my book, Contraindicated, a closer look and revision of mainstream health axioms that have perpetuated illness, disorder, and disease for over a century. When it's out, it is not out at the moment. Buy either the audiobook, the physical copy, or the ebook. We're aiming for that to be out by March 1st of this year, 2024. If you have any questions or if you would like to suggest or request that I react to videos in particular, email me. My email is linked below in the description so you can find that. And with that being said, I will see you guys next time when we react to another charlatan like Sean Nalawani here.